It's Monday night and time for Glambition, where today we're discussing a topic which I'm sure many of you will find very, very interesting. Nudity. Is it acceptable to be seen nude in society and is it only appropriate at certain times? Now, when I look at how society perceives nudity, yes, there have been changes. In fact, I've seen a lot more magazine publications have started showcasing celebrities in their nude state to promote various causes. But when we look at nudity as just plain nudity for enjoyment and for art purposes, is that okay? Is it okay when you're actually posing nude and there's no charity that's benefiting from it? Now with me in studio, we have a range of guests and I'm going to start with the first ever South African black model, Tsejo, who posed nude for Playboy. Good to have you Thank in you. studio. You're looking lovely. Thank What's your clothes you. on today? <laughs> How are you? Very, very well. Tell me, for you, being the first ever black South African model on the cover of Playboy, beautiful pictorial. I'll be honest, I got the magazine and I was like, <laughs> this girl's hot. What made you decide to actually do it? Um, I think I've always been one of those individuals and I think the opportunity came along. It was a great opportunity. I had just started modeling and as you know, being 169 in the modeling industry <laughs> is not very appealing. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity came along and I grabbed it with both hands and it's been such a great experience. So yeah. You don't think that posing nude creates a wrong perception of women in society? Because some people actually say, if you're posing nude, you're inviting guys to actually look and draw and, and have bad thoughts. I don't think so. I think at the end of the day, there's more to me than just posing nude. You know, I think once you get to know me and you know my personality, and not only that, the work that I've done after Playboy. So I think, no, it doesn't. And as well, I think if you believe in what you do, go ahead and do it. Not everyone's going to agree with what you do. Now, I read also in your biography that you went to castings for six months and you didn't get a single job. Yes. You posed for Playboy and then became the face of a big national department store. Exactly. It's yeah. opened up so many doors, you know, and from that came a lot more work. I've done emceeing work, presenting, and as you said, for the national campaign that I did, being shooting my first ever TV ad, that's been amazing. And um, I love what I do and I can't wait to grow even more in this industry. But African tradition and culture, we don't really, it's, it's, a, bit, it's a bit of a touchy subject in yeah, the family. Yeah, it's a bit of a taboo subject. You know, I am 23 years old. I've, I've lived in an equal country where there's democracy. And I think it's about time we do things that we believe in. I strongly believe in being an individual. I strongly believe in being comfortable in your own skin. And if there's any legacy I'd ever want to leave behind, is that I did something that could inspire someone to be comfortable with who they are. Well, we're speaking to Tsejo, of course, the first ever South African black model to pose on the cover of Playboy, but we actually went on set to see what really happens when one shoots gorgeous women naked. What Afrikaans girls do, we ask for permission. My dad said absolutely not, got up, got out of the room, and um, I whispered to my mom, hey, do you think it's okay? And that's when she said, I might be 40, but if, if they take 40 year olds, I'm also going, go. You're only young once. And I took my mom's advice, and I guess the rest is history. Oh, it's been fantastic. She's got a really dynamic body language, and she's very exciting to shoot. And she's fiery, and she's gorgeous, and she's very feminine. It's a major honor for me, not just to be, have a tiny little photo in there, but an actual cover. That's amazing. This shoot was based on the self-portrait phase, which is really big right now. So on the cover, we've got Yolandi on a sort of a shot from above, creased white sheets, and it looks as if somebody's standing above her taking pictures of her, of Polaroids, and just dropping them down onto her. That's actually what's covering her. I think it adds a different perspective to be a female photographer. Naturally, I... I think that female models can, can respond and relax more in a shoot with me. Very important that there's a, a trust relationship there and they know that I'm just wanting to get the best out of them, so they, they're giving it back. It's easier because she's got what I have, so if, if there's some boob slip, it's all right, she's seen it, she has some, so I'm not too bothered. Trying to bring across beautiful images of, of women, which are empowering and sensual but not explicit and really put women on a pedestal. I find it empowering to pose topless 
or naked and being that comfortable with your body and allowing somebody and a whole team, a room, like a room full of people, to watch you and you continue doing your thing, I find that empowering regardless of who it's for. Well, this couch has just risen in temperature by 10 degrees because we've got two hot, gorgeous women. Marissa, the first ever Indian South African to pose on the cover of a male publication. What was it like actually seeing your pictures for the first time and going, this is me? It was awesome. Absolutely exhilarating and awesome. The Indian community is very conservative. How yes. did they react knowing one of their own took off her clothes for a big national publication? There was some controversy because Indian women, because of our culture, tend to be a lot more covered up and more aware and self-conscious of being covered up. So um, I'm hoping that me posing for Playboy has, um, has caused controversy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly did. Yes, <laughs> negative or positive, but it's still publicity. I think to add on to that, being the first of any race is just, it's such an awesome legacy to leave behind. I mean, it'll never be taken away from you to be, she was the first Indian girl to be on a cover of a magazine, you know? So I think it's just such an awesome honor. Your entire family, yes. how did they react? They were very supportive. Um, but first and foremost, my life partner was my cheerleader. And that's what helped me to be so comfortable on set. How did you feel when you saw the first images and you went, okay, this is what I created? It's like, is that me? <laughs> wow, is that me? <laughs> um, when you're posing in front of the cameras, you're not looking at yourself being nude. So that's what probably makes it the most comfortable thing to do. Because as a woman, we all have insecurities about our bodies, as do I. I and look at the two of you. There's no insecurities that could possibly exist they are. here. They are, yes. <laughs> they are. There are many I think you're never, as a woman, you're never completely satisfied with what you have. Smaller women wish they were bigger. Bigger women wish they were smaller. You know, there's always something you want to change. But it's getting to that point where you're comfortable in your own skin. You mentioned that you want to go in, into academia or you want to study a bit more. You also want your career in media, etc. Do you think that posing nude for a magazine might also take away some of your chances at some things? I haven't felt any hindrances um, since I've posed for Playboy. In fact, here I am sitting today and sharing my story with the world. And um, this is a platform for us to reach out to other women and say to them, be proud of yourself. Be proud of your bodies. It's beautiful, you know, a woman can create life. So be proud of what you have. You also actually pose nude for a particular reason. You mentioned that you use this opportunities to, to raise the profile of something that's very close to your heart. I was told that um, I have lupus two years ago. It was frightening and um, I didn't know much about the illness. And now I do uh, after lots of lots of delving into it and studying it uh, via the internet mostly because there's not much awareness about lupus. Um, we do know that there's no cure but there's treatment for it and um, you can live a long healthy life having lupus but you could also um, be one of three people that passes away from kidney failure. Me doing the Playboy cover was a goal that I'd set for myself because at that stage, I was very ill. And um, getting myself fit and training and eating right and being healthy um, was something that I had to do. And using Playboy, Playboy and reaching that goal of being on the cover of Playboy um, really helped me to achieve that goal. Well, ladies, thank you so much for your very inspirational stories. Stick around. After the break, we'll be exploring more issues about being naked, nudity, how society perceives it, but also how the people who actually do it feel. It's becoming a bit of a trend for celebrities deciding to pose nude. Now, some people say that people do it to become famous, but there are also a number of very famous people who do it just to indulge and to say, you know what, I once posed nude. So freshly ground, two front ladies, Kyla Rose and Zolani, decided that it was their chance to show the world just who they are. A 
sort is quite a cool opportunity. I've just recently gone through this process of kind of getting strong, healthy, and I thought it would be a cool time to showcase that. To showcase that I was feeling good about my body, you know, and I'm quite happy with it. I was quite nervous. But I have a scar. I was burnt as a child. So for me, being naked, it's not something that I'm that comfortable with, especially like to an audience that I, you know, I can't see and I don't know who they are. But the shoot itself was such a great experience. The photographer was amazing. She just made the whole thing so easy. Ultimately, it turned out really well and I'm really happy with it. It was a very honest reflection of, of that whole afternoon with that photographer. She just kept it fun and she kept it light and um, made me laugh. And she, I mean, I, I don't know if I can, yeah, I'll tell you, but she, she got naked herself. I don't know if she did this with you. No. But she 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 took <laughs> she, she, she 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 took off her top, you know, and we like kind of exchanged boobs. Yeah, and um, so it was cool. She made it like really like relaxed. So yeah, I thought I thought the photograph really reflected that session. My fiance, I, I don't even know if he knows that that I did the shoot. <laughs> I know what he would say is that if, if if I'm happy to do it, then I must just go for it. I think my dad called me and he said to me, I believe you're naked in a magazine. <laughs> Where can I get it? <laughs> I heard you're naked. Do you think if I walk into the pick and pay, I'll be able to buy it? <laughs> I think what gives anybody a beauty about themselves is a, a sincerity and a kind of, you know, a self-love that if somebody carries themselves with that sincerity and love, it comes across. I have to agree, I mean, I think that's, that's quite a cool answer. I don't know if there is something, maybe there is something quintessentially African. I mean, that, that's another debate. I mean, is, is, is... Am I an African? Exactly, <laughs> I mean, like, in my, obviously Kyla, Kyla's an African and, and everybody who's grown up in Africa for me is, is an African, but we, I mean, we don't look the same. Is it a thing of looks? What, what is African beauty? Is there such a thing? Is it not just a human beauty? I don't know. I don't Maybe know. if it has to be African beauty, then I would say that the strength of a family or the strength of a unit and that, for me in itself, that strength, that self-confidence is something that's beautiful that translates in African women. The very gorgeous Zolani and Kyla Rose taking their clothing off, and not for a particular reason though, they just wanted to do it because they wanted to feel sexy. What do you think about that? Because sometimes people do think that you have to pose nude to attain a level of fame, and here you've got two very famous women just deciding, I want to be naked. I think it's awesome what they did. I think it's such a great inspiration for young girls out there to be like, here's two very famous ladies who pose nude. And I think it's just so awesome because you don't need a reason to pose nude. And who wouldn't want awesome pictures of themselves at the greatest shape they've probably been in a while? So I think capture that, it's beautiful. And I think a lot of women actually have some secret photos of themselves somewhere. Would you pose nude, Joan? Being our South African celebrity, <laughs> would you pose nude? Marissa, I'm sitting, this is my show. Yes, you can't we want to know. such intense <laughs> taking over glambition. <laughs> but it's fair enough, I'll go there. Um, would I pose nude? Um, I'll be honest, no big publication has asked me to pose nude, but I have some pictures of myself, and I do think it is one of those things. For me, it's art. It depends on how it's done. I agree. And for me too, I want to look back one day and go, okay, that's what my thighs looked like. That's when my boobs were still here and yeah. not here. <laughs> you know, it is one of those things. You want to celebrate who you are. And I think it's, it's a very personal, it's a very sensual thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I would publish them. I think that's the other side as well because my career has been on a different path. So I suppose with the South Africa thing, et cetera, it would, it would raise quite a couple of eyebrows. What also happens a lot that I see these days, a lot of celebrities have their nude pictures leaked accidentally. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. which I see the sometimes oops moment. the oops moment. <laughs> yes. mm -hmm. I, I've, I've seen so many pictures, especially the Hollywood stars. I think there was one case of one who had accidentally tweeted a picture of her lying naked in bed and her Twitter followers went up by a couple of hundred thousand in one day because everybody was speaking about the fact that she'd sent a picture out into the cyber Twitterverse actually being nude. Do you think celebrities use it sometimes like that to I gain? I definitely think celebrities use it as um, 
a publicity stunt. How do you accidentally leak a Twitter photo of yourself posing nude on, on your bed? And at the you same know? time, I think you can't be apologetic once you've taken the picture. Yes. I am not apologetic for posing nude in a magazine. Mm -hmm. I think that's when it raises questions, when you all of a sudden want to shy away from it. Like, oops, I took a nude picture, tweeted it. Oh, no, it wasn't me. I'm so sorry. You know, it's a bit like, stick to your story. Know what you're about. Claim it. Own it. Yes, own it. Ladies, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us. If you want to add your two cents to the conversation, use the hashtag Glambition on Twitter and we'll catch up with you after the commercial break. Every year, Marie Claire asks celebrities to take their clothes off for a number of charities. Now, this year, the proceeds go to the Organ Donor Foundation. I was very excited, especially when I heard the concept. I felt enormously blessed to be the photographer. As a young child, I was discovered with a very serious heart disease. I received a heart transplant when I was 17 years old. It's been 12 years since my operation, and my entire childhood was basically just in and out of hospitals. You know, it's always scary when, when clothes and things come off, but it's such a worthy cause, I didn't even hesitate. When I found out that I was going to be doing the Marie Claire naked shoe, at first, I jumped at the opportunity and then went, oh my gosh, what am I doing? What am I thinking? But I'm so glad that I actually got the balls and went for it. There's just so many people in this country that need it. You know, I was in ICU for a few weeks visiting someone and it's so sad. If you can donate anything, it doesn't even have to be while you're alive and kicking. Sign yourself up there because if your life can give someone else a life with hope, that's it's absolutely worth it. You know, you don't think it will happen to you until it's your turn. Our next guest also participated in the Naked campaign back in 2008 in Siki Mzwai, or better known as Mamiya. You know when Dinga tells class. Dagwaz. Dagwaz. I'm going to you my and I'm going to but today... I love it when you do that. Oh, darling, when you speak for it. I love the classical swag. Love it. It's only for you, 2008, mm. your picture. And I'll be honest, that's the one picture I remember because it was such a strong, powerful picture. That time was blessed and it was cursed. Mm -hmm. It was blessed in the sense that I could use myself, my, my body, my voice to push um, a message that had to be pushed. And it was cursed in that it m brought all sorts of element into my private space. And you dealt with it also in a very public way because I remember one of our biggest publications actually started off an article saying men were drooling about the picture, which kind of went against Absolutely. what the message was. I thought it was disgusting. Um, I thought that the newspaper that did that, I thought it was very unprofessional, mm -hmm. immature of the editor, not to have the foresight to know how to position the campaign in a way that will make the people understand the picture. So if you're just going to put my naked picture there and say men all over South Africa are drooling, it already makes it dirty and I felt raped. In context, what were you trying to say with the picture? In context, with the picture, I was trying to say, even if I'm walking naked, it does not give you permission to rape me. It's a sick society we live in where we teach girls how not to get raped instead of teaching boys not to rape. Mm. So for me, I was just like saying, okay, here is the vagina, here are breasts. <laughs> that, that, that's being blunt, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> but you know, we've all got, every female's got, and can we get over it and stop making nudity such a dirty thing? Your family, how did they react <laughs> to it? Because I know, I would, I would imagine a dad, and especially your dad's a very strong figure, he must have been like, what's she doing? <laughs> Um, you know, it's c complicated because <laughs> I come from, my family has intellectuals in it. So there were those who kind of saw what I was doing. I suspect my dad had an influence, a negative influence from somewhere that made him insecure about what I did because I don't doubt in my mind that he understood what I was doing. But because of that negative influence, perhaps, it like made him like freak out. He called a meeting. Well, I didn't go to the meeting because I was like, 
come on now. And then he like called my grandmother. And then my, cause my mom used to be a nudist as well. She didn't have body issues. So when he called my grandmother, my grandma was like, easy tiger. You were married to their mom. You knew how she was. So like, why are you surprised when these girls don't have body issues? Like, get over yourself. In the article, I also read that your sister had turned down posing nude, mm. Tandiswa. Mm. You didn't feel that she was letting the team down by not posing nude? No, it's up to her, you know? She can decide what she wants to do with her body, with herself. It's her choice. I felt like this cause is important enough for me to put down my vanity and just strip and say, this is how I feel about women's issues. And for you, did you feel beautiful when you had that picture taken? I love that picture. Mm -hmm. I love that picture. I wish someone would make a graffiti um, image of that picture. I think it says a lot and I think it speaks for a lot of women. And taking myself away from being Ziggy and being the girl in the picture, I think it's nice seeing a big booty girl owning her body. <laughs> but now in Africa, and you're a woman who is very, very opinionated also on being African. Mm. Is it part of our African identity to be nude? In Africa, before the West came, we used to walk around half naked. In fact, completely naked. We didn't have body issues. We didn't sexualize our bodies. They were just bodies. So this whole influence from West is actually what made us be ashamed of who we are. So if you're going to tell me that nudity is un-African, I'd tell you that you must go to your research and see that Africans before the West came were in their little skins and little 12-year-old girls could walk around naked without their ankles looking at them in a dirty way. Mamiya, on that very strong note, thank you for sharing your opinions with us. For more on African beauty and what makes us uniquely strong and beautiful on the continent, Join us again next week on Glambition.